If lesson planning is something you struggle with, then this video is for you. I'm taking a look behind the scenes of how I go about lesson planning because I'm someone who, when teaching a new course, often plans either week by week rather than month by month, and sometimes even day by day. So here are five tips for lesson planning. So my first tip is something you've heard from me before if you've seen any of my other videos, and that's having a teaching journal that you keep with you. So use this journal, either paper or digital, and just keep track of what you do on every single day in your class, um, what the homework is, what the classwork is, if any student made, made a comment that really like, spoke to you or you wanna make sure to respond to the next class period, if you have appointments with students that are coming up, just basically one place where you can put all your notes related to lesson planning and teaching your courses for the semester. All right, so tip one, have one location, one notebook or digital resource to do this. So my second tip is to structure your weeks in a very similar manner. This will make it much easier to plan out your weeks in advance. So for example, if I teach Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for 15 minutes each, then usually I have on Monday, I lecture for the most part. Then on Wednesday, I have small group activities that my students do. And then on Friday, we wrap it all up by continuing that small group activity and making it a whole class discussion. Right? So every single week, I do the same thing. Lecture, small group activities, whole class activities. They might change what they look like, the small group activities and how I lecture, but the structure remains the same. Right? Or when I teach two days a week, maybe on Tuesday and Thursday, then I'll have something similar. I'll lecture part of Tuesday and then go into the small group activities, and then Thursday we'll wrap up that activity and move on to the whole class discussion. So think for you, how can you structure each week in a very similar manner so it's easy to plan going forward? Now for these days in each week, you also wanna consider having required and optional activities. And so what I mean by this is, let's say if you're teaching Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you know, you look at your Monday on Sunday night, right, or the week before when you're planning for it, and you think, okay, on Monday I have to do X, Y, and Z with students. But if we have more time, there's this other thing we can do as well, right? So you kind of tell yourself, we must do this small group activity because it's so important for the rest of the week. But if we have more time, you know, maybe the activity goes short, don't freak out because you have no ideas, you have that optional activity that you can do right afterward, right? Or the reverse, you might end up planning three activities and only get to two of them. That's fine because then you can move on on the next day with that third activity or replan things, redesign things so activities no longer needed. But basically here, have that activity or two that you know needs to get done on that day and have at least one other option so if your activities run short, you know that you have a backup plan ready to go and you don't panic at the idea of having to let them out early or figuring out on the fly what to do next. In a slightly different vein, I also suggest having light days planned in between major units or major projects. So for example, if an assignment is due on a Wednesday and you teach Monday, Wednesday, Friday, then that Friday plan it to be something really light, kind of like a break activity, because if something happens during that unit and you need an extra day, well, you have an extra day that Friday. You can just forget the activity you have planned for them and just move back the deadline two days. Right? Or maybe there's a snow day, or you get sick, or something happens, you had that one day at wiggle room. Right? Or maybe nothing happens, but you realize your students really didn't understand something and you need to take more time with it. You also have that day where you can say, I'm extending the deadline for this reason. Right? Um, and then if everything goes to plan and they turn in on that Wednesday, no problem, then you still have that activity planned for that Friday. And you know, your students will probably appreciate having that breathing room before the next activity starts. Right? So this could be a day, a light day, or a light two days, a light week. It's really up to you to decide. But definitely at least, you know, that transitional day in between projects, just in case something goes wrong during the project time. And then this last tip is more about your assignment design. So I really recommend having at least one assignment in which students lead an activity in class. So this way, it's less work for you because you know, for let's say 20 minutes on Wednesday every single week for 10 weeks, you'll have your groups of three doing some kind of activity that they lead, right, and facilitate, and you're just there sitting down, watching them, and making sure it goes well, right? Um, so I have an activity like this, which I'll link below, um, 
but basically in this way you know that all right well i'm in charge of monday and friday but my students are in charge of wednesday and once they finish their presentation i can just kind of follow up on what they've said and kind of you know tease out some things that maybe they didn't go into as much depth as you would like so i love doing this because students design small group activities themselves rather than me always paying them for them and students like this because they have the power and the agency to choose what they focus on for at least one day of the semester, right? So this is my last tip, but it's one of the most important ones to consider. But of course, if you're already in the semester, you might have already decided what your major products will be. But in the future semesters, consider you know, how you might have leadership from the student's part you know, as part of an element of your lessons, all right? And so if any of these tips are useful, please do let me know by clicking the like button below. I'd really appreciate it. And if you want more teaching tips, tools, and resources, go ahead and click subscribe as well, because that's the main aspect of this channel, along with more you know, general grad school tips. I'll see you next week.